think one of the good things that Black Ops 4 has going for it so far is the transparency from developer to community. Treyarch has been openly acknowledging and also addressing issues the community may have regarding the game, some things going on, and even some things that we may not have actually known all that much about. And yesterday and today were no exception. We got a mini update in terms of a playlist update and also a community update from Treyarch over on Reddit. Today we're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff, break it all down for you so you're in the know, you know everything going on within Black Ops 4, and you're caught up to speed. So, that said, let's just jump right into it. First thing when you jump into Black Ops 4, whether it be on PC, Xbox One, or PlayStation 4, you're gonna be greeted with the same opening menu across all boards, to which we ended up having a brand new featured playlist for the multiplayer section of Black Ops 4. That being the Mercenary Mosh Pit. Now, many of you guys may recognize this from previous COD titles, but the Mercenary Mosh Pit, for those that are new, is for solo players only. You can't jump in with a party, whether that be two to five people in a party, you can't do it. It's only for people playing solo, but this Mercenary Capture Mosh Pit will feature 5v5 domination, hardpoint, and control. And to me, this is a big addition. Right now, it's the featured playlist. It's not permanent, but I really do hope it becomes permanent because in this game, playing solo is a very big hindrance. I've been somebody that plays solo just because I hop on at abnormal times to play Call of Duty, and when other people may either be streaming in my friends list or they just aren't around to play, I play a lot of solo, and playing this game in particular, you're gonna run up against a lot of parties. Whether or not that's five-man parties or two to three-man parties, it's really all the luck of the draw, but a lot of the times I end up coming up being a sort of 1v5 mentality or 1v6 depending on if I'm playing TDM because it always feels like it's just me making the progress towards the game, plus against that entire team that's communicating with MLG callouts and everything. So it brings down the overall enjoyment of the game when you play matches like that, but now with Mercenary Mosh Pit, you might get people that are actually still, again, very competent and very understanding and be able to set up a perfect spawn trap with a team without any communication. And that's that's just bound to happen every so often, but you're going to have probably a much more enjoyable experience as a solo player if you jump into this mercenary mosh pit. But the one thing that is curious about this is it's not in hardcore right now, which is kind of a bummer because I've been playing a lot of hardcore, again, just for the sake of headshots and weapon challenges, so to jump in and go against full teams can be, again, a slight deterrence in your enjoyment factor of the game, but currently it's not actually in hardcore. I'm keeping hope that it will come eventually to hardcore and maybe be implemented permanently both in core and hardcore that's just the ideal situation here for me but we don't know exactly if that'll happen so keep your eyes open for that one but talking about hardcore we also got another addition in terms of hardcore control this is something that control in my mind is one of the best additions in black ops 4 in terms of game modes that we've seen in call of duty in recent years i love the idea of time versus lives versus objectives you have to kind of balance all three of those things to win or lose the round and it's a fast-paced mesh of multiple different game modes that we've seen throughout the call of duty franchise so Previously, it was only in core, but again, for my hardcore friends out there, it's nice to see some inclusion of these other game modes as well within the hardcore playlist. So I'm definitely gonna be jumping on and playing a lot of this while it is there and hopefully ranking up, getting some decent challenges done all within the process and having fun in a brand new mode within Black Ops 4. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about deals a little bit with a big overall change to PlayStation 4 currently, but as of this coming on Friday to Xbox One and a PC, the black market is going to have some changes compared to where it started out last week for those of you guys that have it launch this week in just a few days and also some things changing in the very near future. So the black market is something that of course launched this past week for PlayStation 4 users in which we have right now the ability to earn items all the way up to tier 200 just simply off of playtime and in conjunction for a limited time we do have a Halloween themed event with different face paints, emotes, calling cards, gestures, all that kind of stuff and so we're gonna be able to rank up through all of that we don't just yet have a way to spend cod points or get items directly that'll be coming probably in November cod points might be coming sooner we're not entirely sure just yet but the actual marketplace is coming in November but players that jumped into the black market early on noticed that it was a very slow going process to go from tier one to tier two to tier three and so on. So this was something that was investigated and before any adjustments have been made, my buddy Ink Slasher did the math here on this and if I'm not mistaken, he relayed to me that it was over 12 days of playtime to get to tier 200. So that is a long time of playing Black Ops 4 and in a time that has roughly 50 days total, 
I don't know how many people can invest 12 days of game time into a 50 day span. I know that on average out of a year, I think I put probably that much time into an actual Call of Duty just simply because of everything else that goes on in the world. And I'd venture to say that I probably put in more than the average player simply because I have a YouTube channel invested into it, but who knows? But still, again, that's a lot of play time. So this was something that was addressed directly by Treyarch in which they said that the earn rates actually were not all that balanced across the game modes and the progress rewards weren't as much as they were anticipating whenever they first implemented it. So what that means is that whenever you played multiplayer or blackout, it didn't actually translate to be a one-to-one -one ratio despite being simply contingent upon playtime like you'd think, and also you weren't getting as much as initially intended for that time that you put into the game. So both of those things have now been resolved in which earn rates are more balanced across the game modes of multiplayer and blackout, so it should hopefully be that one-to-one -one of the same amount of playtime invested into each game of blackout or multiple games of multiplayer should now give you the same rewards over that span of say 10 to 15 to 20 minutes. Other things though that were mentioned that will hopefully help remedy this and be something that players can capitalize on are challenges are going to be introduced earn rate accelerators, we don't know exactly what that means, and event-based tier skip rewards are going to be available in future updates. Now there is no ETA, but it looks like right now when this launches on Xbox One and PC, it's going to be something that is going to be following the same current format right now. Doesn't seem like we'll have those challenges, earn rate accelerators, and event-based skippable rewards added in as of this weekend. But I could be wrong, and I'd be totally all for being wrong if this is implemented by the time this is introduced on Xbox One and PC. But as for challenges, I'm a huge fan of that. I definitely think that is an absolute must for something with 200 tiers and that takes so much organic time. Earn rate accelerators, I have no idea what this actually may entail. Maybe this is something that say like Fortnite's Battle Pass, you can end up buying tiers with V-Bucks. Maybe that's where your COD points can go if you wanna jump ahead in a few different tiers. Or again, it's probably going to also come back to the marketplace that we'll see next month. That's where you're gonna see a lot of the COD points primarily come into play if it were in my best educated guess. Now the event-based tier skip rewards, I think this probably comes back down to that initial leaked post about the Black Ops Pass and how players with it would get that extra head start for 10 tiers of each event and also the main overall season that we have here for this. So I think that's probably where it's gonna come down to, but again, the black market has had some updates already and definitely has many more on the horizon. So that's gonna be big. I'm very excited to see how this all plays out and hopefully it plays out to be in the benefit of us, the players. Another big thing that was changed out was servers are actually no longer on the 20 Hertz system. Now, of course, this is something that has been beaten to hell and back in terms of jokes made out of it, but it is something that stability was prioritized over performance so therefore we started out with 20 now we're currently at 30 we're not at a 460 but it's not 20 anymore so it's definitely better and it will be increasing as time progresses and so far with only one day of downtime from when that initial report came out to when it was fully publicly addressed we've already seen changes here out of this so I'm expecting an expedited time frame they gave the set parameter of two weeks but already one day after that seeing an update with it and more on the horizon it's a good sign so playing devil's advocate, I understand where they're coming from and it looks like we're gonna be seeing more normalized performance from servers in the coming days. Other changes though that stem out of this update and also relate back to some of the things we talked about, there was also a nuked out bug that was fixed out. That was actually a big accomplishment for many because if you don't know what the nuked out challenge is, it's to get a nuclear with no streak kills in free-for-all. So in other words, win a game of free-for-all by hitting that score cap with only your gun. A perfect game, if you will. Now in hardcore free-for-all, there was a bug that would prevent players who completed that challenge from getting their Dark Ops challenge calling card for it. It's kind of a bummer, and sure again, it was nothing game-breaking, but it was something that for those that complete it, they like to wear it off. It's a badge of honor almost. Additional changes can come in the form of multiplayer changes made with today's update. One being the acoustic sensor range was nerfed slightly, which it was actually nuts before. I think if I'm not mistaken, it was around 30 meters in game, which is quite a hefty distance and gives you a long time to get ready for a gunfight that may be coming your way. As for how much it was nerfed, it hasn't officially been tested or anywhere publicized yet, but we'll keep you updated with that as more information comes up. Morocco, there was an under the map exploit fixed where players could end up glitching through a wall and going underneath the map. That should be fixed out. 
If I'm not mistaken, there is again still one that persists on Arsenal. I saw a bunch of clips of that over on Reddit and I think even a clip on Twitter or two where people were literally getting like in between some of the barriers where you couldn't shoot them, but they could shoot at you. Hopefully that one's fixed out as well. I know that that one's probably under the radar of Treyarch and being addressed as we speak. But then we also see that in Blackout, there were some changes. The nine bang was adjusted in a couple of different ways. Firstly, stack size for how many you could hold in one slot has been decreased from two down to one. The charge time was increased increased, so you have to cook it longer, and the fuse time before detonation was extended. So if you do end up seeing one bounce your way, you can either adjust accordingly so that you don't get blinded as much, but it's probably still going to happen. Or if you're looking to throw it long distance, it's not going to go off before it reaches your intended target if you're the one throwing it. Additionally, another blackout glitch that was fixed was the trauma kit glitch, where if you popped a trauma kit, as the announcer was saying blackout, it would apply then to your in-game health as well. You'd start in the helicopter with 200 HP. Another thing is that creator class slots are being investigated. They haven't been fixed just yet, but once you reach prestige two, you end up unlocking creator class slot eight. And then above that, you end up getting a new creator class slot per prestige. But right now, as it stands, if you end up using that eighth slot, it actually doesn't save your changes you make to it. So realistically, you only have creator class one through seven. And that's something that has been obviously a pretty relevant bug. People can't use classes that they made in those. And that's being investigated. There is no fix right now, but they did say that they're looking to have that fixed for the upcoming update next week, which is also when we'll see a bunch of weapon tuning. So expect a big title update coming next week. Probably Tuesday is my guess if I were to take an educated one here with this, but that's what we have at the moment on that. And the final thing that I do want to mention deals with PC in particular, this being a memory leak issue. And this is actually really big. For those of you guys that don't really know all that much about how PCs perform within games, there are memory leak issues that sometimes arise. But from what I've heard, it went a lot deeper than just memory leakage that would require you to restart your game. It went so far as that it could damage your solid state drive or SSD if installed on it and also could corrupt your build of Windows in rare instances. Now, as far as how deep it goes in terms of the fix, I don't know, publicly it was addressed that it would fix the issue where it would force you to restart your game and restart Bnet, but hopefully those rare corruption issues are fixed as well, because let's face it, that's pretty scary actually. If you've got a gaming PC, that's anywhere from a grand to a few grand in hardware that could be damaged, and nobody wants that. So right now, as it stands, the memory leak issues have been addressed. Hopefully they go as far in depth as what some people were reporting with damage to their hardware. Hopefully that's been fixed out as well, but for everything else, that's all that we have here on the table now. That is what we are given from Treyarch over the past two days. These two updates in two days, of course, certainly addressed a lot and a lot has already been fixed out, but the other stuff we can wait to see in an upcoming update as of next week. A big title update, one that you're actually going to need to download, not something that just requires you to restart the game. But that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular that you guys are looking forward to here out of either of these updates or anything coming in the near future? What do you guys hope to see in that title update coming next week? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below. If you are also new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, zombies, blackout. We got you covered here up on the channel with the best info, tips, tricks, best class setups, updates, information, all that good stuff. We got you on the channel. So if you guys want to stay up to date with all that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty Black Ops 4. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, practically live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation or whatever it is, those links are down there for you guys to check out as well. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.